What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. The gameplay you guys see today is Destiny for the PlayStation 4. I'm really enjoying this game. I've spent probably 15 hours playing it this week. My buddies from the Beastly Thoughts have been playing with me. We've gotten some single player stuff going. We've got some Crucible stuff going. And I can't say enough about this game. It's awesome. But that's not what this video is about. What this video is about our developer fanboys. That's right. I have developed, or I can't say developed. I have created my new term for developers who jump on one side or the other of the aisle to back up one system versus the other. And they're developer fanboys. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being a fanboy. I myself consider a Sony fanboy. And if you don't like it, tough. I love Sony games. I love Sony hardware. I own tons of Sony stuff. I even got the Sony Xperia Z1 phone. And uh, I'm big into Sony. It doesn't mean I hate the other consoles. Sony just has more of what I like. Their ecosystem is more tailored to what I like. Now, developers, on the other hand, should developers be even allowed to be fanboys? Because they're the face of their company. And so when you hear a developer become a fanboy, does it affect you in any way? And wh what I mean by that is this. If there was a pastry chef who approached you and told you in the grocery store, don't buy these ingredients, they are disgusting, they don't work, they will do this to your cake. I'm a pastry chef, I do this for a living. There would be a degree of validity to his claim. If there was a mechanic who approached you in AutoZone and said, hey look, those tools break. You know, if you use them ten times, they're going to break. But if you try these tools, they will work. Here's my card, I'm a mechanic. There will be a degree of validity to it. And uh, so, when you hear a developer speak to one console versus the other, then there's usually a degree of validity to it because they make video games for a living. That's what they do. And so they spend a lot of time with development kits. They spend a lot of time, you know, optimizing for consoles. And so if they see one that outdoes the other and they speak to it, more than likely there's legitimacy to their claim. And not only that, <laughs> the PlayStation 4 has been kind of wiping the floor with, with the Xbox One as far as uh, multiplats go. And there's really no, no disputing that. Every multiplat that's ever come out has been you know optimized more fully on the PlayStation 4 and so now we're getting developers who are coming out and speaking to the fact that the PS4 is their system of choice to develop on this article is on GameSpot.com and there will be a link in the description for you guys to check out yourself the order 1886 developer says the PlayStation 4 is the only console that can handle its graphical fidelity the developers behind the PlayStation 4 exclusive shooter talk about their upcoming game and why it needed to be on Sony's hardware. Ready at Dawn, the studio behind the upcoming third person shooter, The Order 1886, has revealed the game's visual quality could have only been achieved on the PlayStation 4. Speaking at a recent Sony event in New York, Jay Goldberg, community manager at Ready at Dawn, said the studio came up with the idea for The Order 1886 while still making games for the PSP. However, the game's main conceit, an experience that feels like a movie but plays like a game, requires a console with the right technical specifications. We couldn't have achieved this graphical fidelity with any other console, Goldberg said. The studio used full performance capture for all characters in the game, as well as the same character model for gameplay sequences and cutscenes, making the transition from one to the other almost seamless. And if you guys have seen The Order 1886, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When it goes from actual gameplay to cutscene, it, it's seamless. You can't tell which is which. And that's how good that game looks. They really have tapped deeply into the power of the PlayStation 4. But my question to you guys is, should developers be allowed to be game fanboys? Should they be allowed to be console fanboys? Because I think that it could potentially change the outlook of the consumer. Is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Or do you think the developers should just keep their mouths shut? I want your opinions in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this story. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you guys for all the support. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.